In Super Smash Bros. Melee, every character has their own unique Break the Target stage. This stage complements their moveset. Normally, each character would only have access to their own Break the Target stage, but by using mods we're able to have access to all 25 Break the Target stages with every single character. In this episode, we're going to be trying out all the stages as Dr. Mario to see which stages are possible and which ones aren't. Alright, so first up we got Dr. Mario here, and I know what some of you might be thinking, that's just uh, Mario's clone character, and you're right, but Dr. Mario is actually a lot different than uh, Mario in this game. The main difference is that Dr. Mario doesn't have a wall jump, and that wall jump was obviously very useful during Mario's episode, so it's going to be a lot more difficult with Dr. Mario. I guess I could have used this projectile there, but I'm just used to jumping in there. From the other episodes. So Dr. Mario wasn't in Brawl, but he came back in Smash 4. And the funny thing about Dr. Mario is that uh, if you look at his appearance in Melee, he looks like he could easily just be a skin for Mario. They're so similar, but when he got reintroduced back in Smash 4 and in Ultimate, he definitely looks like a lot different. Okay, just barely got that last one. Dr. Mario's actually like a really good puzzle game. I had an NES growing up and I had Dr. Mario and that was definitely one of my favorite puzzle games to play. I remember one day before I went to school, before I left, my dad was playing Dr. Mario and when I got back from school like six hours later he was still playing Dr. Mario so definitely an addictive game. Ready, go. kind of miss playing NES like I haven't really gone gone back to it so Probably sometime soon I'll go and bring back out my old NES and hook it up and play like Bubble Bobble and Super Mario 3 and Dr. Mario and uh, all those old classic NES games. Cause that's one thing, this channel, I guess it mainly covers 64, obviously I've been doing a series which is GameCube for so long, so I think I'm definitely going to branch off to GameCube a lot more once this series is done. But I think it'd be cool to really start branching off into Super Nintendo stuff and NES stuff, or maybe even Wii stuff, so... Obviously, Nintendo 64 is my favorite. The other Nintendo consoles are obviously super cool, too. And there's lots of ROM hacks for Super Mario World. The Super Mario World ROM hacking community is probably, arguably, bigger than the Super Mario 64 community, so... I think it'd be cool to check out some Super Mario World hacks. I used to play Super Mario World ROM hacks way back in the day. I only played through a couple of them. I remember I had like an emulator on my laptop and I would play it like during road trips with my family. I'd play like Super Mario World ROM hacks. For this one, we're going to need to use the Rising Tornado. And when you do the down B, if you tap B every other frame, you actually gain a lot of height. It's just a really hard move to do. This is the task that I made for this one. And as you can see, with a good down B tornado, we can definitely get up there. Ready, no, these next two episodes are going to be pretty rough here, because Dr. Mario obviously, no wall jump, and he has that one uh, super technical technique that you have to almost do tasks to do. I know there are some really good uh, Mario or Dr. Mario players that can do that technique, but I definitely can. It's a 60 frame game, right? So mashing B every other frame, like hitting B 30 frames a second, that's definitely not something I can accomplish. Ready, go. And then next we have Ganondorf, who's probably the worst character in the game. So that episode's going to be definitely frustrating, but I had a pretty good run with uh, just having ones that were easy to do. Before Marth, those last five were actually pretty easy challenges, but uh, Marth was difficult because of his uh, Jigglypuff thing, and then obviously Dr. Mario's going to be difficult because of all the task stuff. Ready, go. I'm really not looking forward to Ganondorf's episode. <laughs> I guess I'm probably going to do that either today or tomorrow, I'll, I'll record that. 
I wonder if uh, Mario will even be able to, or Dr. Mario will even be able to make it up to that last target spot there. I might have to do a rising tornado again, so... Yeah, alright, I'm gonna have to task this one also. So this is the task that I made, and as you can see with the rising tornado, we can easily get up once again. Right now for Ness's stage, and luckily we have these pills that will really help. Alright, now we got the Ice Climbers, so we got two characters that were kind of stuck in the NES era, because... Well, I guess Dr. Mario probably... I'm pretty sure he had a Super Nintendo game, and I know there was a Dr. Mario on the 64. Right now, Kirby stage. I find it kind of cool that, like, Dr. Mario isn't a clone character anymore. Just because of uh, how unique Mario is with his flood and everything. Same with a lot of characters, like, Roy isn't a clone anymore. I don't think Ganondorf's a clone anymore. Ready, go. Oh, I found it pretty funny that uh, when I started this uh, challenge video, it was just the girls that had flawless runs. You know? Now uh, that has obviously been broken. For the longest time, it was only the girls that could do this challenge. Alright, now we got Zelda's here. And this one shouldn't be too bad. I found a trick to get the last target with uh, Mario, so Dr. Mario should have no problem. Okay, so this jump's a little bit precise, might have to try it a couple times. This is definitely going to be the episode with the most task things. <laughs> I don't know, hopefully Ganondorf doesn't have more stuff I have to task, but uh, I guess uh, Ganondorf doesn't have a mechanic like Dr. Mario's of the tornado where uh, you almost need to task to get its full potential. Or down B tornado, I mean. I'd say it'll be nice having another Pokemon episode with uh, Pichu. So looking forward to that because it gives me a chance or an excuse to talk about Pokemon for a bit. And Pichu has a wall jump and Pikachu doesn't, so Pichu should be a pretty good character to do too. Alright, now for your uh, Jigglypuffs here and. <laughs> I think a lot of you that are familiar with the series can probably already predict what's going to happen. Okay, so I turned on hitboxes here just so we can have a better understanding of how close we are. 
fucking back air, not even close. Yeah, forward air, not even close. Let's try the cape, which is probably our best bet. Yeah, cape doesn't even come that close either. Alright, two targets remaining. I'm gonna try the task to get target 9 with a good down B tornado. We should be able to get target 9, so that's gonna be another one on the task list. Alright, so this is the task that I made for Dr. Mario. And this is pretty similar to the task that I did for Mario on Jigglypuff, so I already knew this technique. The technique is you use a down B tornado into a block to push you. And then, yeah, that pushes you a little bit. You get just enough of horizontal distance to hit the ninth target. So on Marth's episode, I clipped through the floor on Jigglypuff's level, and a lot of other people can clip through the floor also. It's just... It's a lot more useful for Marth, since his side B kind of lets him float in the air for a bit and get a lot of horizontal movement. And not really any other characters have moves like that that were put in that scenario, so that's why I, that's the first time I used that trick. So I honestly don't think that trick would have came in handy for any other characters and would have let me get any additional targets that I couldn't have gotten already. But who knows, I might pull up that trick later in another episode, like I might have to use that for Roy too. So. Now one thing, this episode is probably going to be a lot shorter than Mario's episode, even though Dr. Mario is a more difficult character to do, just because I've gotten a lot better at these target challenges in the last uh, month, so just my speed has improved, I guess. So that's another reason why I want to do the clone characters last, just to see how much like I improved. I guess with Marth and Roy, there obviously probably won't be much of a difference, but uh, for Dr. Mario and Falco, I'm sure there's going to be a pretty big difference between the two episodes. But Ganondorf's so much slower than uh, Captain Falcon, I'm wondering which episode's actually going to be longer in length. Those two episodes will probably be pretty close. Because once I did the Captain Falcon's episode, that's when I started uh, to pick up the pace a little bit. And I started to do the target test stages a little bit faster. Obviously, I still do them pretty slow. Because people speedrun these, like, it's called mismatch speedrunning, and they can do these courses in just incredible times. Ready? Go. Times are obviously a little bit important to me. Like, I'll do a course multiple times a lot of the time just to get a little bit better time, but uh, it's more just seeing what's possible is the point of this challenge. Just seeing like how many targets they can get and how many that they miss and things like that I find super interesting. I remember I originally did this video for Smash 64 and initially I thought of Melee as like a joke because of uh, how long it would take me to do. But now we're already on Dr. Mario's episode and almost done the series so it just feels almost surreal that I was able to <laughs> get this done. Because this series has been like my channel's content for like, <laughs> well over a month now. I know I took that little break. Okay, nice. We're able to get that. I thought I might fall off the left side. Alright, now Young Link, and yeah, that, that, that's it. I guess I'll do a task with the down B tornado, just to show you guys how high up Mario can go, because I don't want there to be any comments where like, oh, how can you try tasking Young Link with the down B tornado? So I'll do a task. Ready, go. Well, on the Jigglypuff episode, I actually had an update video, because I thought Jigglypuff couldn't do Young Link's, but she could. And uh, she was able to do it using Rising Pound, and at the time, my thought process was if Kirby can't do it with his up B, there's no way that uh, Jigglypuff's rising pounds are better than Kirby's up B, but they are. 
Jigglypuff can gain more vertical height than Kirby can with her rising pounds than Kirby's up B, which just doesn't even seem feasible, but it's true, I guess. I know that's one thing, I was kind of expecting a character to not be able to uh, do Roy's stage so far, but so far everybody's been able to get through that box one way or one way or the other. Complete. Yeah, Dr. Mario did pretty good. Next episode is gonna be Ganondorf's. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you could leave a like or maybe consider getting a subscription to this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And I hope that you guys all have a great day.